Scotty Hardwick, Bogan Plays Cards. Today I'm going to be using some air dry clay. Never used it before, so it's going to be pretty interesting. All right, so let's see how I go. Thanks for liking, subscribing, leave a comment. Cheers, guys. That Bogan Plays Cards! All right, so first of all, this was an incredibly fun project, an absolute learning curve. I'd never used air dry clay before, and I was just giving it a go. I decided to make something very generic. I thought, I'm just going to make a mushroom, because this seems to be quite an easy shape. Uh, the clay seemed to be malleable enough. Um, let's just see how we go. Um, so I used a makeshift rolling pin, which is actually my, a empty deodorant can. I flattened it all out, and then I just grabbed a ruler and cut the bits off so that I would have a perfect square. Not so perfect, but you know what I mean. I then tried to test the structural integrity of it, to see if I could make a cylinder out of it. Uh, wrapping it around different things to see if it would stick, um, or whether I needed to make a solid mass of clay in order to make it. Um, I ended up settling for a cardboard tube. I got a little bit of extra clay to pack around it because I didn't want a perfect sphere. I wanted it to look a little bit more uh, uh, asymmetrical. And uh, then I proceeded to wrap it around the tube. As you can see, I am making it up a little bit as I go along, just seeing what this air dry clay is, uh, um, or what, what it can stand, what, what you can uh, really truly do when you put it through its paces. I found that a little bit of water helped to smooth over the edges and sort of let it, let the seams meld together. Now at this point, I will acknowledge the elephant in the room. It's a 25 minute video, but I implore you to stay till the end, because although I, I did say I'm making a mushroom, and the title says I'm making a mushroom, I tell you, this thing went took so many different forms, and I ended up making a little bit more than just a mushroom. So I let the cylinder dry, and then I moved on to creating the top of the mushroom. Basically just rolling it up into a ball and then using my thumbs to push it out again trying to make that shape. Using a bit of water and it became a lot more malleable. And then after I got the right shapes I basically just left them there and they dried. Uh, it took about just overnight about 24 hours um, but dried pretty pretty solid. Um, definitely couldn't do anything uh, after leaving it to dry. Um, however, I can see that if you were to leave it to dry maybe about 10 hours or so and then come back to it maybe with a scalpel or some kind of sculpting tool, you'll be able to make different patterns or make some changes using a sculpting tool. So that might be a idea for the next video. Now I got this air dry clay from an online store in New Zealand called Mighty Ape and it was about 10 New Zealand dollars. Um, so it's very very affordable and it arrived in about three days. Um, so it's honestly really really affordable and cool and absolutely 100% will use again for another project.
make sure that you um, pack the uh, head of the mushroom a little bit because if it's too thin then it may crack when it's drying. I did find that there was a little bit uh, that was starting to crack when I was observing it drying so I grabbed a little bit more um, air dry clay, added it with a bit of water and put it over the crack and it seemed to have fixed and done the job. And there we go. We have two parts to a mushroom. Alright, so at this point it's dried. I've got two parts. I've got the head of the mushroom. I've got the, I suppose you could say the stalk of the mushroom. Um, uh, my plan was then to just paint it up, uh, get some more water, add some last little bit of clay, stick it on, good to go. I have a mushroom. Cool. Then I decided that's a bit boring. So I am going to grab some of my coffee stirrers and popsicle sticks and I'm going to construct a little archway which will then be like a door. We're going to have a couple of windows poking out and we're going to turn this into more of a, uh, a gnomish hut of sorts. Maybe two stories, we'll see how we go. Yeah, we're going to, instead of making a boring old mushroom, we're going to make a really interesting mushroom house. So a mushroom house. Even more generic, really, when you think about it, but that being said, if you've watched any of my other builds, I tend to take the darker approach to things. So this isn't going to be a la 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 kind of smurf house. This is going to be some kind of uh, dilapidated, decrepit, falling apart house in the sour part of the woods. Um, so what I did is I grabbed a whole bunch of toothpicks, coffee stirrers and larger popsicle sticks and I started creating a brace for the archway which then turned into the hallway and door of this mushroom house. Now I'm pretty sure the only way to really do this without being too fiddly is to use hot glue. Um, and you could also use hot glue when you're putting the planks in a little bit later as you'll see um, However, I opted for PVA Because PVA dries with very minimal gap Whereas hot glue tends to have a quite a lot of mass when you're sticking it on and you're forever trying to pull off all the little wisps and bits and pieces But you'll see what I mean a little bit later Cutting the coffee stirrers into planks and then there's the PVA, and we stack the planks uh, somewhat um, hazardously uh, over the archways. Be creative. If you want to make it a nice, um, even uh, wall, uh, then just stack them regularly, And uh, but I can't do that. Then I grabbed a steel brush and I attacked the stirrers to give it a little bit more of a uh, older wood grain look. Now I do recommend wearing some form of mask when doing these kinds of activities because it does create quite a lot of powder and there's no way that you would like to breathe that kind of thing in. cutting the bigger popsicle sticks out so that I can create a roof. This also ended up uh, going further using the offcuts that I had to create a door for the house as well. Right, so I grabbed some matchsticks and I stuck the two walls together and created a slightly more uh, durable structure. 
I definitely used hot glue for that though because there is no way that PVA would have dried in time before that thing falls over. Then I create use some more matchsticks to create a roofing frame and yet again using the hot glue to put that in place. I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that this was probably one of the most fiddliest parts but I do not regret turning this mushroom into a house because it turned out so cool, I'm so proud of it. Apply the roof. And as you can probably note there, there's going to be a gap on the top. So I just split another one of those large popsicle sticks and I created a type of like a roofing fascia type um, thing to hide the gap and it turned out quite well also. Alright then just starting to size up how I was going to get this entranceway art slash archway into the mushroom and what I was going to do to try and make it stick. So I just grabbed some extra air dry clay, put a whole lot of water in it and I just started pushing the clay into all of the gaps of the house, in between the house and the stalk of the mushroom. I was a little bit worried at this point that the air dry clay might crack and uh, if you're copying this build maybe it could crack for you. I definitely saw a couple of times where it almost didn't I applied extra. Um, however I found that once I'd found the correct level of or the correct amount of air dry clay that I needed to apply to stick it on um, it ended up fine and it just requires you to check on it every few hours and see how it's going. The cool thing with this build is um, I find myself wondering what came first. Maybe there was a little shed here first in the forest and the mushroom, which might have been enchanted, came up afterwards and it sort of engulfed the shed and grew around it. Or did somebody think, hey this is a good idea, let's try and build into a mushroom. Um, and then they created it, uh, created the house first, um, and sorry, they created the um, house into the mushroom. going to have a lot of fun trying to work this one into the current campaign that I'm running. What does a house need? It needs a front. So I used a very similar technique to building the walls but I uh, cut out a triangle for the top to fill that in and then uh, glued planks onto it and then of course I used the excess like I mentioned before for the popsicle sticks for the door. And while I left it all to dry, after I'd got it ready, I started painting the mushroom. Did I just say got it ready? Man. Must be a long day.
Right, so it's all about finding the right colours. So I used all of these, um, mixing certain colours in together to get the right tones that I needed. Um, but starting with just the straight black paint, that is to put, uh, paint onto the inside of the mushroom house so that you can't see anything inside it. It's a little bit of an optical illusion to make it look like there is more to it. Then I mixed some uh, white or cream colored paint with a little bit of gray and that gave me the base coat for the mushroom stalk. painted the top of the mushroom completely black at first and then I grabbed a red and I mixed it in with a little bit of uh, black and made a quite a quite a cool color to be honest it turned out really really well and yet again this is all just experimenting never hurts when uh, crafting to have a little bit of an experimentation see if it works if it doesn't work hey that's how you learn add two coats and now it's time to attach the front Now because I was planning to flock this build, I wasn't too worried about uh, having some exposed hot glue areas around the seams, uh, as you'll see uh, once I've finished. But if you're not planning to flock this, then you want to try and find a way of gluing it on the inside so that the seams aren't as obvious. I don't know why you wouldn't want to flock though, because Flocking is by far the best part, and definitely my favourite part. Then I changed my mind. As I said before, I was planning on putting some more air dry clay into uh, the top of the uh, mushroom in between the stalk um, and the top to stick it on. I decided that since no one's actually going to see in between those two bits, that using hot glue was more than adequate enough and it did the job perfectly. At least I know that it will hold for a long time now. As you will see, I grabbed the uh, model by the top multiple times and it didn't fall off. So that is already a good test. Adding a little bit of detail on the top, um, that's of course optional, but what's a mushroom without a couple of uh, interesting circles and things? Now I used white here, but I was planning on washing it with a purple wash and that came out really awesome because it comes out looking a little bit magical in a way. And then dry brush a little bit of extra white on the stalk or the stem. It was at this point that I thought that this is really starting to take shape. I grabbed some Earthshade to use as a bit of a, a stain for the, uh, the wood parts that I've used. 
and I just coated all of the popsicle sticks and coffee stirrers with a big dose of Earthshade. I do apologise if there's any uh, uh, car noises. Um, it turns out that uh, the road decided to be really busy as I started recording this. Which is uh, quite interesting, since we're still meant to be in lockdown. So a little bit of red to really make the, uh, put the creepy on. Make it seem like there's a little bit of blood stain and things like that. Then I grabbed a darker tone wash uh, to put around the bottom of the stem and the uh, house area uh, so that it would look like it's a little bit dirtier on the bottom. Once that had dried I got a lighter tone and I covered the rest of it in that. And that was where the mushroom truly came to life. really cool to use shade because it really brings out all the little details that otherwise you'd miss. There's the purple for the top of the mushroom. looking pretty cool. We all know what's coming up next though. The best part. You have seen uh, in previous videos all of these different things before and there's nothing new. I haven't added anything new. Um, it is all the same stuff. But it's always how you use it, rather than the products that you actually have, that really makes the difference. Really brings those models to life. Of course, stirring it all in with some PVA glue. And starting with the uh, blended turf, you patch in all of those holes, all of those seams, all of those bits that are exposed that you don't want to be exposed. With the leftovers, you just have a bit of fun and decide, oh, I might put some here, I might put some there. Hey, water trickles down from the roof, let's put some right right at the bottom of the roof. Because that's where the water could gather, etc, etc. And it just, just go for gold. Right around the bottom of the mushroom too. And that's the first part of the flocking sorted. Then I had these uh, vines uh, that you might have seen me use in an old uh, build that was the ramshackle house build. And uh, I just dabbed the tops of these vines and put, stuck them to the, the, the ceiling or the, the bottom part of the top of the mushroom um, so that they would drag down like something is grown uh, under it. I also had some older vines that I uh, grabbed. I've got these um, dried, viney looking things that uh, I, you definitely would have seen in my old Haunted Well video um, that I draped over the front and then grabbed some PVA glue and stuck them down. But that is it. That is the final step to create this absolutely made up on the spot mushroom house. I really enjoyed the project, I really enjoyed the air dry clay materials, and I just really liked being a little bit more creative and not having a plan. It's really nice to not have a plan sometimes and just give it a go. 
I hope you really enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you like it, like this video. I've got a Facebook page, um, the links are in uh, the description below. Thank you very much and have a great day. That Bogan plays cards!